Hello, you're watching Encore. I'm Rochelle Harrison Pless. Thanks for joining us. Coming up. The bunk is strictly a suit and tie, mother. <laughs> He's the actor best known for roles in the cult series The Wire and Treme. But Wendell Pierce has also put pen to paper. His memoir, The Wind in the Reeds, has hit bookshelves here in France. It's a moving exploration of family, his beloved hometown New Orleans, and how art helped a wounded city heal in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. Wendell Pierce, welcome to the show. Thanks Thank you. for being Thank here. You. Thank you for having me. Now your memoir, The Wind in the Reeds, a storm, a play, and the city that would not be broken. It's just been released here in France. Mm -hmm. The book takes us through your family history, growing up in New Orleans, uh, your career, uh, but also uh, the heartbreak uh, and devastation caused uh, by Hurricane Katrina uh, and how the city picked itself back up again. So much was written uh, about New Orleans in the wake of that tragedy. Uh, why did you do the same and what did you think you could add to what was already out there? Well, first I wanted to uh, be able to answer some kid years from now who says, you know, New Orleans darkest hour, Mr. Pierce, what did you do? I wanted to kind of document what happened. Uh, and in my attempt to document that, I realized um, I had an epiphany that uh, I had a great legacy of family, a great legacy of community, and most importantly, we have a power in our culture in New Orleans and the power of art and how that can be um, resilient, resourceful, uh, rejuvenating. And I wanted to write about how that was tapped into after uh, the flood uh, and how people came back in New Orleans using uh, culture as, uh, and, and the power that it has. Well, exactly. Exactly. In late 2007, more than two years after Katrina, uh, you played in Samuel Beckett's drama Waiting for Goodall. Uh, that was staged in uh, New Orleans in vacant mm -hmm. patches of land in Gentilly and the Lower Ninth Ward, two of the worst hit neighborhoods. Uh, it's about two people waiting endlessly and in vain for their savior named Goodall. How did this piece of theater specifically and art in general perhaps uh, help New Orleans? get back on its feet? Well, it was a cathartic moment. It was uh, people from uh, disparate walks of life who came to see the play. We were at the epicenter of where uh, hundreds and hundreds of people had died. Uh, we were on hallowed ground. And to do a play about isolation and desolation um, and people waiting for something outside of themselves to, uh, re to find themselves again, uh, the lesson of the play is that you have to find it within yourself and not look for something outside and it showed me that a piece of art can not just be a piece of entertainment but it can actually be um, something cathartic and very moving. And what about uh, the writing process for for the book? Um, mm -hmm. How did it feel to to dig up some very painful memories? Well it, like I said before it was an epiphany about what happened for uh, for, for generations in my family, you know, I, I write about my great grandfather and how he was sold as a slave, as a baby in his mother's arms, separated from his family. I write about my father fighting in World War II and coming back to a country where he was willing to die for liberty, but yet did not have that liberty and freedom in America when he was returning. And that legacy is too strong of a legacy for me to, uh, even look at whatever we were going through after the great flood of New Orleans and think that it was something I couldn't handle. So our culture was always one of social uh, upheaval and protection and uh, visceral and something that you could tap into. So it wasn't trivial and just a piece of entertainment. Mm. So when I started to write the book, I realized it was a documentation of all that had gotten me to that point in my family, but also the blueprint for how it would survive after a great disaster. Well, I've been to New Orleans uh, several times and uh, there are still many abandoned houses and very bleak neighborhoods that uh, the rest of the city seems to have forgotten. There's much criticism of the local government uh, for that. What do you think has changed or perhaps not changed in the 11 years since Katrina? Uh, well, the one thing that has changed is there's still a large population of people who haven't been given an opportunity to come back. Uh, the resources aren't there. They haven't put together uh, people, uh, haven't put together the, uh, uh, the political will to make sure all the neighborhoods come back and people come back equally. Uh, 
that doesn't mean that the uh, that people aren't coming back, aren't struggling to come back. It just suppresses the culture. Uh, it also makes you realize that you have to be vigilant about um, what is important to you and your advocacy and living your life uh, because um, there are those that do not have your best interest at heart. Mm. And you have to make sure that uh, that was one of the lessons uh, my father and mother taught me, that you have to be ever vigilant and not assume that things are going to change, that you have the one power is to do something with yourself. How are you going to contribute to the paradigm or change the paradigm? And that's an, an American aesthetic of uh, finding individualism within structure, within society. Uh, and it's also a part of our cultural history of New Orleans. It's the improvised trumpet solo in the middle well, the of a structured of song. It's... Yes, and, and that's what the American aesthetic is all about. Okay, well, many people know you uh, for your roles in the uh, TV uh, series uh, The Wire, David Simon's uh, cult right. series, I should say, uh, as Bunk Moreland. Uh, that was filmed mm -hmm. in Baltimore, uh, a place you're still connected to. You've uh, invested in a jobs program for the city's art district, right? Yes. I Actually, as I leave Paris, I go to break ground on a $20 million, 110-unit apartment building. Uh, I believe that the social justice movement of the 21st century is economic development. And so when I saw the riots in Baltimore a year and a half ago, um, I had the same reaction of the flood in New Orleans. Mm. Uh, I've come to love Baltimore. I uh, lived there for many years during the show. And it reminded me of home. It is my uh, second home to me, the love that I have for the city and the people. And so I, I wanted to uh, have an answer to that. You know, and Baltimore's darkest hour, what did you do? Actually giving people an opportunity to create jobs create an economic engine, create an economic engine, and then we're also going to have apprentice where we're teaching them how to develop themselves. You're also known for playing Antoine Batiste mm -hmm. in Treme, uh, which is another David Simon uh, series. It follows the residents of New Orleans uh, as, as they try and rebuild their lives in the wake of uh, Hurricane Katrina. Right. Uh, what made you accept that role? Uh, it was, um, well, David was writing it when we were finishing The Wire and was teasing me because he kept giving me scenes. I'm thinking about doing this uh, show in New Orleans, and he knew I was from New Orleans, and I kept, I didn't ask. I was like, you better have something in there for me. Better be me in there. It better be me. <laughs> and, uh, and he gave me a scene one time, and he had written my name as the character's name, Wendell, the trombone player, and, <laughs> then he, and he told me, and that's how he told me I was going to be in it. But it was more of a art imitating life and life imitating art. It wasn't... Um, it wasn't just a television show. It was the last years I got to spend with my mother. It was uh, uh, the years I was working on rebuilding my neighborhood and the city. Uh, I, had, I felt like I had a great obligation to get the culture right and depict it right because we were making a little cultural document mm. that forever will be able to be uh, um, a, 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 an idea of what it was like uh, when we were rebuilding the city and understanding that culture had everything to do with its rejuvenation. Culture is at the essence of who we are. Well, actually, the New Orleans Tourism Office says visitor numbers uh, have been steadily climbing every year uh, over, the sev uh, over several years, actually. Um, do you think that Treme had anything to, to do with this tourism boost? Absolutely. Yeah? Uh, and and <laughs> that's one of the great honors. I, I take great pride in that and honor. I, I've had many people tell me I actually moved here because I saw your show. We're very proud of the fact that more people are coming to New Orleans because we showed people what New Orleans is really about, the culture that's there. New Orleans is home to uh, the country's oldest African-American neighborhood, Treme. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, obviously, uh, the U.S. has come a long way uh, in the last century, uh, but do you think it's not far enough given the current situation with what's going on right now? There are those that do not have our best interests at heart. And when I say our best interests, uh, I mean everyone. Uh, there is intolerance in the world. There is prejudice and racism that is going to be ever present because it's an ugly part of human nature. So we have to be ever vigilant. What we're seeing now is the veil being lifted. Every once in a while, we're reminded of that ugly part of human nature. For years, black men have been saying, hey, when I'm stopped by the police office, police officers, 
uh, they treat me differently. My life is at risk. That's, you know, and people either believe this or not. Now they're actually seeing it on video. So mm. the veil has been lifted to remind you of the intolerance that exists in the world and gives us an opportunity to say whether we're going to accept it or change it. And I think the awareness and the advocacy that's happening now around Black Lives Matter is the, is the vigilance that you have to have to make sure that the, the values that we, we so um, admire and claim as Americans is not something that can be taken for granted. Well, uh, in the book, you spoke a lot about your father and how proud uh, he is to be American, no matter whatever, whatever is happening in the present, uh, because there's always hope for a better tomorrow. Uh, we've got the US presidential election just around the corner. <laughs> Bit of a dirty campaign uh, going on, but are you hopeful? Uh, yeah, I'm always hopeful. The idea, the American aesthetic is, uh, is very hopeful uh, in spite of everything, because uh, you know that it is amorphic and ever-changing and that you can actually have impact. And with this election, I'll just say this. The American people will demonstrate to the world that we're vigilant and that we don't accept intolerance okay. and that we won't accept the ignorance that is being portrayed by one of the candidates. Okay, well, uh, we're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately, <laughs> Wendell, but we, we do always ask our guests to talk about a piece of art that's on their radar. Uh, Wendell, you've chosen the Marvel live-action series Luke Cage. Yes, Why? Luke Cage shows um, a, a, an image that we've never seen, this African-American invincible man, and he's taken some of the images that we have in our contemporary idea of uh, the fearful black male and turned it into a superhero. Okay, so. well, we'll be leaving uh, our viewers with a clip of that. Uh, a reminder to those watching at home that Wendell Pierce's memoir, The Wind in the Reeds, is available in France under the title Le Vent dans les Roseaux. Wendell, once again, thank you so much for being here. Thanks it was for such having an me. honor to have you. Uh, for more arts and culture news, check out our website and connect with us on social media. Stay with us, there's lots more coming up on France 24 after this. Every single day. Yeah, my heart is full of you. Why don't you just tell us your name? The whole neighborhood is yapping about how two goons got the beat down last night. I heard it was four guys.